Yep. This is a terrible idea. Probably gonna zap myself and pass out. If I do, I will put it on YouTube. I guess the first thing I'll tell you is these things are kind of like the filter in your refrigerator, except maple farmers use them backwards. They're bigger than what's in your refrigerator, but you know, you take your glass and you stick it in your refrigerator door and out comes the clean water. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here. And the water is coming out the top. So this is where pure water comes out of the reverse osmosis. So here we have raw sap. This is from the field, from the farm. And this is from two different locations. Uh, this is from the Boy Scout camp here. And this is from Bissell Family Farms, uh, where you see me working in the woods often. So the raw sap will actually come out of whichever tank we want. This gives us flexibility in our piping to either wash or concentrate. So this tank A is coming out and flowing through this hose into the reverse osmosis. The steam here, that is just condensate from the steam away. That has nothing to do with the reverse osmosis. So we're gonna stick to this side over here. We have the sap input, the raw sap input. So they can go either to Oscar or either to Freddie or Oscar. So I guess this is probably a good time to talk about Freddie and Oscar. My grandfather, Carl, he used to name all of his equipment. And when my dad and I originally started our business, we were using buckets and we would go out and we would take Freddie out to collect the sap. It was kind of a three wheel scooter with a little bed in the back and it was called a heeled hauler. And his name was Freddie. And that's how dad and I really originally started building this business. And we would haul sap through all through the woods and collect sap from buckets and into a little tank in the back of Freddy. Over here, you've got Oscar. And my grandfather had an apple orchard. And Oscar was the cherry picker uh, with the basket that he would ride around in the orchard and it would lift him up to prune the apple trees. I uh, highly recommend these little guys. They are water overflow alerts and uh, every maple farmer knows what I'm talking about. Sometimes we go to fill our wash tank and uh, yeah, we forget. We walk away, we get busy. So that's what this is. It's an overflow alarm and it's kind of nice. You, you get busy, you walk away. So let's go back to the beginning here. We have Freddie and Oscar and the raw sap all feed, all go to the inlet of this feed pump. This blue pump here is a centrifugal pump and the raw sap goes into the pump and this pump's job is to push raw sap through these filters. It is like a whole house filter, about one micron, very similar to what you would buy at Home Depot or Lowe's, just a larger, longer canister and a longer filter. So the entire job of that pump is to feed these pressure pumps. So the high pressure pumps are fed by the feed pump and then uh, the high pressure pump will push the sap around the membrane and the pure water will come out the top and flow to the front control panel here where there's a flow meter. So right now Kevin is pushing out 12 gallons a minute of water. That's water we don't have to evaporate. So with this RO, 12 gallons of pure water and this concentrate over here. So what a gallon and a half of concentrate. So that's what we will eventually put up into this tank here to boil. I have a sensor right there. It's a conductivity sensor and it's telling me how much electricity 
the uh, raw sap will conduct. Pure water doesn't conduct electricity, and you can see a reading of 237.5 microsiemens. That's what's coming into the RO and out of the RO are uh, the, the water, the permeate, which is the top number, and the concentrate down below, which is a higher number since we are concentrating the raw sap up. So two things come out. This is important. One thing goes in a reverse osmosis and two things come out. So Kevin's concentrating up his feed pressure has a uh, sensor on it so you can't ruin your, your, your high pressure pumps. Those sensors are telling the machine to stay on. You do not want to starve these high pressure pumps so you need to be above 20 PSI. So these filters will get plugged and your feed pressure will drop. And as soon as it gets below 20 PSI, it will stop the machine. So you don't harm the high pressure pumps. This is a concentrate valve. If I want to increase the sugar concentration, I turn it to the right, to the plus sign. If I want to decrease it, uh, you can see the flow rate actually changes as you increase or decrease your concentrate valve. So as you go higher in concentration, your flow rate gets lower. So the flow of the permeate is coming through, coming through this flow meter, out the top, and it goes into this control panel, which is a decision tree and really confusing. Even for me, I have to double check often, but the permeate's going up into that tank. So that's the reservoir for the permeate and the high pressure pumps, the reject that's not going through the membrane are flowing through these little high pressure hoses on the bottom. And this is a, the concentrated sugar. So this control panel, it, it's a decision tree. First, you have to figure out what you're doing here um, with your output on the RO. Don't even worry about those bottom valves. You first have to make a decision on the top here. So you're either going to put it in your tank or you're going to do a wash or put it to drain. So my permeate tank is so full right now that I'm actually running my permeate to drain. I, I don't have any more additional storage. So it's actually coming right down the drain, pure water. So this doesn't matter because right now I'm concentrating to the tank up above. So here's where my concentrate comes out of the reverse osmosis, flows through this stainless steel pipe, through the wall, and it comes across the ceiling, right across that I-beam, down into the concentrate tank. So, hey, let's go up there. Let's take a look in the concentrate tank. So this is concentrated sap. Boy, if we could get this out of a tree, it would make our life so much easier. So this is very sweet to the taste. Um, this is probably about 15 bricks and it's sugar, it's minerals, and it saves us a lot of time. So we'll run this concentrate right down. Phil's going to open the door into the steam away. And that steam away right there is preheating the concentrate before it goes down into the flue pan. So you can see it's labeled concentrate over here. I have a little level sensor to save us from going up and down that ladder. We probably run Freddie more often. Well, we do because he's right here. He's close to everything. And if we have a small sap run, we just run Freddie, but Oscar and Freddie, Freddie are duplicate units. So just to give you an idea of how much we'll concentrate, we'll take a measurement. So Phil's going to grab the sample off the sample port. Cool. What do you got, Phil? 15.1. 15.1, beautiful. So Phil lets a little run out just to make sure he gets a good sample. The last thing you want to do is use one drop and it has nothing to do with what's actually going through that flow meter. So. I'm actually going to look through this, go over here, show you what the incoming sugar content was, 1.2 bricks. 
And then this is what it looks like. It's kind of a trick to use your eyeball, let alone a camera. So that is 14.1. Okay. It's gonna be a rat's nest, which makes it dangerous. Okay, safe now, I think. They plug it in. Step away from the metal table as I plug it in. Hopefully this will work. Oh, come on now, can't even plug in. How many maple farmers does it take to plug in a light bulb? Cool. I'm gonna grab some permeate. Right there. Come down around. Let me grab some here. Yeah, this will be fun. A lot of head pressure. Yeah, baby. A lot of head pressure. I'm going to rinse on that first one. Putting my life in my hands, I want to make sure I can get a good sample. Okay, I apologize for the noise, but uh, here's the plan. I'm gonna use this conductivity meter. Uh, it has some probes down inside. You can see there's a little tiny, uh, a little tiny probe, and that'll conduct the electricity through the, whatever liquid's in there. So let me turn a little light on, maybe that'll help see. It's a little stainless steel ring down in the sample port, and then another probe. So that's how the electricity is conducted through this. So I'll turn this on. And this is measured in, it looks, it's micro siemens. So that's the actual unit of measurement. And it's the amount of electricity that uh, this unit uh, will measure that goes through liquid. So here's my samples that I've got. Um, I've got distilled water. I've got a bottle of Aquafina uh, for the Pepsi drinkers and then a bottle of Dasani for the Coke drinkers. I got some raw sap from a farm. I've got some city water, I've got some permeate, and then I have this electrical contraption uh, to show with these two probes here. Um, basically, I'm opening and closing the circuit because I think this is important for people to understand that pure water does not uh, conduct electricity. So the permeate, this is uh, through our reverse osmosis is 6.3, 6.4. Okay, here's the plan. Um, you saw that I have this handheld conductivity meter and I have conductivity meters on the reverse osmosis to help me figure out how well I'm pulling water out of sap. So this is permeate that is from the sap we're processing. I've got city water, this is the raw sap, and then I got a couple bottled water brands and then distilled water. Um, so what I'm gonna show you here is how pure our permeate is. I believe this is six micro siemens. I'm, you know, I'm gonna put it right on the front for you. So that's the measurement, six micro siemens. Um, and then I'm gonna play a little game with uh, electricity. And hopefully I won't pass out here on the camera. Um, so I've got a metal table and water. But I think the key is I'm trying to explain that pure water does not conduct electricity. That's why we use online conductivity meters to know how pure the water is that's coming out of the membrane. Um, pure water reads zero. So this number would be zero. So this is city water. This is 336 microsiemens. This sap is 228. This Dasani here is 50 microsiemens, so this has actually got 10 times the amount of stuff in it, minerals that they add back when they make it, than the permeate that we're producing out of our reverse osmosis. So Freddie and Oscar are making water that's 10 times more pure than Dasani. Distilled water should be zero. This is reading one. So this is reading one. 
This is rating six. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. Let's do a little bit of an experiment. Uh, I guess I want to show you with this light bulb. Currently, there's no juice to it. I'm going to go ahead and hit my... So now you can see there's juice. So I will show you... Um, well, I can't reach. Well, there's a conundrum. So let me bring the water over here. City water, okay? So city water will conduct. So you can see I'm down. I'm not going to touch that water because I don't want to ground it. But you can see the water is actually conducting the electricity. So what I'm going to do is shut this off, verify it's off, and I'm going to dry it because I don't want to put this city water in my permeate. So put my city water back. I guess I'm going to have to bring everything over here to light bulb. But what I wanted to show you was there's no juice. There's going to be juice. And then if I put it in the permeate, there's no juice. And I hope I don't pass out here. Eee! Just kidding. So yeah, there's no, no juice. I can touch it underwater and you'll see that it'll conduct, but that's how pure the water is coming out of the reverse osmosis that um, uh, I, either dumb enough or brave enough, I will put my finger in here and I will not get zapped. So that's my science lesson for the day. Um, you can see I'm the son of an electrical engineer, but I am no electrical engineer. Verify it's off with my tester. And then bring some more over. What, what do you want to see? Let's see how the Dasani does. Uh, when I, let's see if the Dasani will conduct electricity. The Dasani does not conduct electricity. So even at 50 microsiemens, it's pretty safe. So there's not enough minerals. It's actually the salts in your skin. So if you ever fall in a vat of pure water that has electric current through it, don't sweat and you'll be okay. So how about that? I did not expect the Dasani to have zero conductance on the 120 volt outlet I'm running here. Uh, so if that's 50, we can make the assumption that if the Dasani is 50 microsiemens, then you know one's not going to conduct electricity. So let's look at raw sap. So here's raw sap, 228 microsiemens. Let's see how it does. So it definitely will conduct electricity when I touch. Ah, ha, ha. There's enough minerals in raw sap. So to conduct it, it's faint. If I get them closer, that's funny. As I get closer, it gets brighter. This would be a fancy dimmer switch, wouldn't it? It's like a dimmer switch. There we go. Far away, close. This is raw sap just from the trees. So there's enough minerals. And if I touch them, you can see it really gets bright. But it is conducting electricity. Isn't that fun? I'm going to shut it off. Verify it's off. There we go. So raw sap. The interesting thing here is city water. Um, raw sap's 228. City water's 336. I bet you this will be pretty bright. So let's turn it on. Verify it's on and then show you. Yeah, baby. So bright. And then as I move away, it gets dim. And it is conducting the circuit through the minerals and the salts in the water. How about that? Um, I'm no science teacher, but uh, I thought this might be helpful for a science teacher. Verify it's off. So, been wanting to do this for a while just to show why I have the meters on the reverse osmosis because I know if I start with raw sap, it's 228. Um, you know what would be fun? Let me go get some concentrate. Verify it's off. 
Yeah, it's off. Be right back. I'm gonna use this guy. So I have a sample of the concentrate coming out of the uh, out of Freddy here, and what I'm gonna do is see how well that conducts electricity with our little tester. Definitely bright, and hopefully I won't zap myself. Oh yeah, nice and bright. So if I touch it, it brightens a little bit, but there's enough sugar and minerals in that concentrate. It works even better than the city water did. So I am going to shut this off, verify it's off, and uh, dry off my probes. Last thing I want to do is put, you know, do this experiment and accidentally take some of this mix it in here and then uh, put my finger in there. That would not be good. So verify it's off. Yeah. And that's that folks. That is your lesson on the conductance of electricity in water. Pro tip. You definitely want to have a carbon filter. If you have city water, you do not want chlorine. Uh, so all of our water for this side of the plant does not have chlorine and I bought this specifically for The reverse osmosis and this is a very important thing to have right here All right, this is the sap that we're now boiling. It looks much better and as you can see It's a, a much better sap cleaner and what the guys do is they they spray the sides down as it goes it makes it easier to clean so they just continuously spray the sides down but this is all the sap we have left from this boil and uh, this one's clean ready for the next load and then this is going through here to the reverse osmosis um, at this point you could almost time it, concentrate it back up, but I'm not gonna mess with a good thing. They got a good rhythm going. So we are concentrating. It's going up. Into this tank. So here we go. Into the, con into the concentrate tank. We got our organic defoamer going here. So got a nice boil going. Good boil. It's interesting, it's got more of a violent boil up front. What uh What's up with the blanket? Kev, you like having your own big filter press now? I love the stress. It takes a lot of the stress. It takes all the stress from almost burning a pan from the whole <laughs> All right, so this video, Zach Hargrove has been watching me out there suffer uh, by putting a slice when I take the barb. Get a good close-up of that. So I told Austin Zach had a trick to take this off without slicing it and putting micro leaks. And he said, grab one of these and you pinch. I've never done this before. Well, how be? So you pinch the end, and it'll pull right off. Do you see that, Austin? And now, no show cuts. me the other side of the board. What's it look like? I might have been a little too aggressive on my pinch. Well, yeah, but it's your but first time. But there's no micro on. leaks or slices. Huh. And he said they found this by accident. One of the guys didn't have his knife on him, and he had this guy. So let me do it again. You ready? All right, we got the other side now. I'm just now learning this trick. I'm going to squeeze the tubing, oh. 
does kind of tear it, doesn't it? You said you rip it instead of cut it. I definitely made it bigger, look at that. Yeah, he chewed it up a Maybe little bit. Maybe I need to turn and do it the other side, make this side bigger. Now, it might just come right out now. Oh, Zach's going to make fun of me. I don't know, man. I've certainly worked better the first time. Yeah. We just need to get That practice. first time it was something else. We need to get practice with this guy. But no micro leaks. Look at it. Definitely didn't put a slice in it. Zach, thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Hopefully, everybody watches this channel will appreciate that tip you had for us. So, thanks, Zach. It's not the beautiful, normal, you know, sugar house look with stacks in the air, but I'd like you to know how how wonderful the air smells right now in Jefferson, Ohio. I don't think anybody minds when we boil syrup, especially when it's, it smells this good. We got steam. <laughs>